24 to 48 hours after having a normal spontaneous delivery or two to three days after having a C-section, the day will arrive for mom and the baby to go home from the hospital. This is very exciting for some, but leaves a lot of anxiety to a few. The feeling of being overwhelmed with too much information leaves you more confused and more instructions than the doctors and the nurses discuss on the day of discharge, the more nervous you become. In this video, I will tell you what the medical staff, doctors or nurses, nurse practitioners, lactation consultants typically discuss on mom's and baby's last day from the hospital. I will only be talking about the baby's discharge teachings and not mom's to make this video short and sweet. I will be making another one for moms in another video, so stay tuned for that. Welcome to Mother Baby Central, your great resource for valuable contents regarding pregnancy, postpartum, birth, newborn care, and baby's first year of life. Number one, feeding your baby. If you are breastfeeding, feed your baby every two to three hours or by demand. Let me break it down for you. The baby should be eating around 8 to 12 times over the 24 hours. So, if you are going to feed every 3 hours on the dot, that will make 8 feedings, which is perfectly fine because then you are meeting the minimum frequency of the recommended times for feeding. But then there is one problem. The baby does not stick to certain schedule. Sometimes they get hungry earlier and sometimes they sleep longer than 3 hours. If it has only been 2 hours since the last feeding and the baby is showing signs of hunger, like rooting or turning the head towards mom's breast or trying to put his hands and start to stop on the finger, go ahead and start feeding. The best time to breastfeed is when the baby is awake, calm, and active. Crying is a late sign of hunger, so please don't wait until the baby is upset before starting the feeding because it is more difficult to initiate breastfeeding when the baby is in that phase. For bottle-fed infants, feed at least 30 ml every 3 to 4 hours. You can increase the amount gradually as tolerated. Hold the baby in an upright position or the head is higher than the body. Do not let the baby take big gulps from the bottle. Hold the baby like so to let him face himself. Remember to burp the baby halfway and at the end of each feeding for both breast and bottle fed babies. On a side note, please don't give your baby water to drink. There, is, there will be a time for that and your pediatrician will guide you when that will be. Number two. Keys and who's check the diaper every three hours. And to make this process easier to remember, schedule it before and after feeding times. Change the diapers immediately when you see or smell a poopy diaper or when the diaper is full of pee to prevent skin irritation and or diaper rash. If you need a protective barrier cream, a petroleum jelly will be a good one to use to prevent skin irritation on the butt area. Initially, record the number of wet and poopy diapers every 24 hours. This is one of the information the pediatrician needs to know on the first newborn visit. Ideally, on day 3 of life, which is the day you will be going home, there should be at least like three wet and three poopy diapers like for the whole 24 hours. Day four should be for wet and for stool, you know, and so on. The color of the poop for breastfed babies is also going to change from the black and greenish, thick and sticky consistency called meconium to brownish color and then to a nice golden yellow, seedy and loose stool once mom's milk comes in. Usually on day 3 or 4 for bottle-fed babies, the color of the poop varies. It could be deep or light brown, green and yellow, as long as there is no blood, it is normal. The number of urine and stool is around, around 3 to 4 times per day. Number 3, temperature. Have a digital thermometer handy at home. A normal temperature for a baby is 97.6 
to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything above 100.4 is a fever. For smaller babies, these are the babies less than 37 weeks uh, gestation and or weigh less than 5 pounds. Make sure they maintain a temperature greater than 97.6 degrees Fahrenheit, taken axillary or under the arms. Anything below that, it means the baby's cold and needs some warming up. Place the baby's kid to skin with you and put the hat on. At this time, make sure the temperature in the room is not too cold. Some of you may ask, what temperature should we set our thermostat on? It should be at room temperature between 68 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 to 22.2 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, do not overheat the baby by putting on too many layers of clothing. This is dangerous too and can lead to SIDS or Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Pro tip, if the baby is not acting normally and the skin feels warm to, warm to touch, Check the temperature rectally to get an accurate measurement before calling the pediatrician. Apply a lubricant at the tip of the digital thermometer, like a petroleum jelly, so the thermometer slides easily inside the rectum. You can turn your baby on his side or lift both legs up to position the baby before putting the thermometer in. You don't need to go very far. Insert a half an inch or the most an inch into the rectum. If you're not sure how to do a rectal temperature, just do an axillary temperature check and the pediatrician will give you a more specific instructions on your next step. The three instructions I just mentioned are the most important ones you need to prioritize. Your baby has to eat and is able to eliminate and thermoregulate. If any of those are abnormal, then it is time to give your pediatrician a call. Before we continue, if you find this video valuable, click on that subscribe button so we can widen our reach and share more pro tips to everyone who needs medical instructions broken down for better understanding. Moving on to number four, jaundice. Pay attention to the color of the baby's skin and the white of the eyes. Normally, before leaving the hospital, the neonatologist or the nurse practitioner orders a humidity check, whether it's transcutaneous. Let me explain what that means. The nurse uses a small handheld gadget and presses the end of this small machine on the baby's forehead and then paints a number called bilirubin level or serum. This is a blood draw where the nurse makes a small prick on the baby's heel and draw blood. Then, the nurse places it in a tiny blood tube and sends it to the lab for reading. So, you should have this information on the day of discharge. If the medical staff is concerned, they will ask you to follow up for another lab test the next day. If they're not concerned, they will tell you just to do a routine follow-up with your pediatrician in the next two or three days. Now, when you get home and in the next few days, the bilirubin level normally goes up. So what should you do now that you know that the bilirubin normally goes up? Breastfeed every two to three hours or by demand or bottle feed every three hours. This is a pro tip, moms and dads. If the baby's not feeding well, the chances of that bilirubin to go higher than normal is more likely. If you notice the baby is getting lethargic, what is lethargic? No energy. The yellowing of the skin is getting worse and the baby is not interested in eating at all. These are cues for you to call your pediatrician immediately. If you haven't seen the pediatrician yet since discharge, you can always call the hospital where you deliver that and ask to speak to the doctor on call or the nurse practitioner and they will give you um, instructions on what to do next. 